All right, so I got a review code for For Honor, and I'm going to tell you what I think about it so far. I haven't played it a whole lot yet, mainly the story mode and practice. I haven't played online yet, but I think it's enough for a first impression, at least. So, first off, there is no need for it's just a game comments. The reason why I say that is because every time in a video where I have the audacity to talk about how realistic fighting or equipment or whatever is in a game, there are plenty of hysterically offended comments. I don't know why. Apparently some people just freak out whenever somebody dares to expect any degree of realism in games, even though most games have some degree of realism. It's not a black and white on or off matter. Like even in Skyrim, where there are dragons, that doesn't mean that there's no realism, because clearly there is gravity or something like that, even though it's sometimes a little wonky. <laughs> and, you know, some of the ways in which they move are still realistic. That just as a side note, I'm going to jump into free mode here and play that a little bit and um, yeah you know what I'm just going to go directly over to the berserker because that'll allow me to make some statements about realism so what I also realize again no need to point that out is that this game is not supposed to be historical it is set in this alternate fantasy Earth where earthquakes shifted the continents and brought all three, three factions together. And uh, Vikings, Knights and Samurai have been fighting over resources for a thousand years and all that. So it's, it's clearly not supposed to be historical. But people still sometimes ask, how historically accurate is this game? Short answer, not at all. I mean, if you, if you look at her, for example, nothing at all about her outfit that is even remotely, vaguely Viking, you know, from that time period or any time period, really. Um, her, like the, the leather shoulder pads, we have no evidence for any of that. The clothing with the really miserably rough stitching, the giant belt buckle with the Mjolnir, it's... Uh, no, none of this. The way the axes are shaped are... They, they don't look particularly like anything that the Vikings had at that time. They look like later medieval axes. You know, all of that. So, again, it's not... It doesn't have to, by any means. Um, but, the things what bothers me a little bit is... Why do they call them Vikings? and knights and samurai for that matter. I mean, Elder Scrolls has pseudo-vikings, you know. They they are not called that because they are in a fantasy world and everything. They are, they are called, um, they're called Nords. So it's clear that they are not supposed to be vikings. Whereas here they actually call them vikings. And they also call them knights and samurai. So uh, that's what I find a little weird, you know. There wouldn't be this hint of a claim to any kind of historical accuracy if they had called them something else. Like the... Whatever, the the Northmen or the... Uh, <laughs> the Scanny Nozzles. <laughs> I don't even... <laughs> whatever. Or the... The Paladins or the... You know, whatever. The walking tin cans. They, they could have called them any number of things. You know, that, that would not imply an attempt to pre represent his history or alternate history or whatever in any way. But, you know, that's just nitpicking. Again, it has no bearing on the uh, gameplay whatsoever. Uh, that's what really matters here. The gameplay, of course. So, as far as that is concerned, I like this approach... Uh, that they do with the different guards. So you cycle between the different guards, you know, left, right, and high guard, which is uh, pretty neat. It's a different system than you see in many other games, and it seems to work pretty nicely for the most part. Um, so far, it seems that... Um, oh, there we go. <laughs> Kick him right in the crotch and then cut his head off, even though he has armor. Okay. I mean, the whole armor thing... 
this of course contributes to again to the weird image in movies and video games of cardboard armor where it's completely um, ridiculously flimsy and doesn't offer any real protection where you can just cut through it but you know it's for the sake of gameplay you know when you have different factions that have different levels of armor and different classes especially you just can't really take that into account the really ridiculous thing starts when they fight the minions because th this is yeah this is basically what i would call disappointingly generic fighting uh, I say disappointingly generic because this looks exactly like, you know, hundreds of other video games and movies and etc. This this is how they quote unquote fight in Hollywood. I mean, against all the minions when you're surrounded, things like spinning are, I guess, a little easier to justify. But... I'm, I'm gonna try to show you some of the more ridiculous things that she does and also the other more agility focused characters they have a lot of crazy you know just jumping hopping dancing whatever choreography basically this is this does not look like fighting it looks like choreography which is a little disappointing i was hoping for a bit more why well simply because it adds to immersion and looks better in my opinion now this is completely just opinion of course and uh, your mileage may vary but i just think that a certain level of realism in fights just makes them look better they look more convincing they look more real they look you know actually even more brutal in some ways or at least more brutally efficient um here you have the the gory executions of course which are you know they're for the coolness i get it they can look pretty badass no doubt about it but it's also there's also plenty of really silly stuff that just makes me go okay do we need this i mean we do in order for the game to appeal to a broader player base because this is the kind of stuff that people expect, you know, really cool movements and just badass stuff. And this character, of course, is also completely ahistorical. I mean, it's it's basically a rogue somehow crammed into the knight faction. She doesn't look a whole lot like a knight. I mean, she looks nothing like a knight, basically. The only thing is that a helmet, or I guess it could be a mask, I'm not sure. But that's literally the only reference to knights. Anyway, so let's get to the more ridiculous stuff. There we go. So this is one of those super silly twirly things where they, you know, where they roll over someone's back. Of course, you can only do that with the minions, which is, you know, the same way as in the movies. Um, if you tried that, something like that, against somebody who actually knows how to fight, you would get absolutely wrecked. It's... you need a compliant quote-unquote opponent for that to make it work. Because if they don't stand still while you roll over the back, guess what? You're gonna land flat on your face and you'll be stabbed. It's just... none of this would work. Um... And I don't, personally, I don't think it looks cool. This is probably because of my perspective, you know, from, you know, as somebody who practices historical swordsmanship, it's a lot less appealing to me because of how inefficient it is and how silly it looks. But of course, if you don't, if, if you don't have that perspective, then it may just be super awesome. I get that. And... That's, that's, that's fine. It's just people ask about realism in games and, you know, you should be able to talk about it without triggering people. <laughs> that's basically what I think. But some of the executions, even though they are terribly convincing, some of them look pretty neat, actually. I'll uh, try to get the other one. Let's see, where's the next hero? By the way, I, I can't say that I do not like this whole uh, hero and minion dynamic. It's interesting because um, it, it kind of switches between 
the uh, the quote unquote proper fighting against the the knights, and then just this wholesale slaughter of just those noobs, so to speak, which allows you to you know, do more fancy things that you know, are supposed to be more satisfying. I mean, generally execution moves in games are satisfying, no doubt about it. And yeah, this one here. This is what I personally like. I mean, again, you'd have to do that to a half-dead opponent, which, to be fair, they are at that point. They are basically dying. So, something like that might potentially, or something similar might potentially be pulled off in real combat, especially since it's basically grappling to an extent. But, I mean, at that point where they, they offer so little resistance that you can just do that they are literally half dead <laughs> so it's just it's just becoming an exercise in being a a douche <laughs> at that point if you were to do that in you know real life which you shouldn't especially nowadays <laughs> but uh <laughs> Anyway, so this is just my ramble so far. As said, I, the uh, the combat is pretty um, satisfying gameplay-wise. So here we have the murder stroke and half sorting. So it's really interesting to see that you know this. On the one hand, you know the, the basic cuts and all. Yeah, okay, that's fine. That that's how you can fight, indeed. And murder stroke and half sorting is not something you see a whole lot in games normally. So there is some realism in there. Don't get me wrong. You know, I'm, I focus mainly on the the less realistic things because they they're just what stand out to me. But there are plenty of things where we can say that yeah, okay, that's. That's reasonable. And one thing I have to point out positively is this is a female and she has the same level of armor as the guys. She does not run around in a male bikini you know, with, with tiny little plates of steel on her nipples and you know showing off her butt and everything. This is nice. This is really nice to see because it makes sense. You know, I mean, internally. Something doesn't have to be historical, you know, in order to make sense. I mean, it's still a game where supposedly they don't have magical invisible armor, right? I mean, that females in any setting, be it as fantasy as it may, would run around in bedroom armor is just bizarre. I mean, outside of just saying, well, this is just supposed to look nice and it's sexy and that's good. Uh, which is fine. You know, don't get me wrong. I, I have no problem with erotic content in video games. But, you know, it's still silly. Alright, let's wreck some more minions and then leave it at that. So, yeah. First impression is overall definitely positive, even though I've yeah, have my nitpicks and all, and I wish some things were different, for sure, but you know, the game as it is, is enjoyable, and uh, you know, well, ah, get lost, and uh, well done in terms of gameplay and everything, so I can't really complain, it's just, you asked for my opinion, and there you got it. <laughs> Double parry. So, I will play this some more and then see what I think about it later. So, thanks for watching.